Hi everyone. So it's been a while since my last Polestar video. Um, it is full lockdown now in the UK and it is much more difficult to go out and do stuff. So uh, yeah, I've had a, a few days where I haven't really been able to do much that's um, relevant to film a video that's uh, actual reason to go out of the house. But um, today I actually need to go out for work purposes and uh, I need to do about an hour and a half worth of driving, probably 50 to 60 miles to do a few different things. So this video is just gonna be um, me driving around in the Polestar and uh, we'll do some range tests. We'll see uh, what consumption's like. And uh, yeah, hopefully some nice shots as well driving around the Sussex countryside. And uh, yeah, stick with the video and hopefully this will be an interesting and enjoyable one. If you haven't uh, subscribed already, please do so down below and uh, you can also uh, like as well and uh, click the notification bell for future updates. All right, so yeah, let's get started with this video and it'll be hopefully full of uh, interesting bits and pieces and information about the Polestar. Okay, so uh, I started off, it's a really cold day today, so six degrees at the moment, but uh, it was like minus two last night. So for the south of England, that is quite cold. Um, and uh, I let the car heat up in the sun for a while and I preconditioned for a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, this is an interesting thing that uh, I like to do. Um, if I'm preconditioning, I will um, think about whether I need to extend the range or I just want to warm the car up. So today I just wanted to heat the car up because I'm only traveling 50 or 60 miles and I'm charged to 90%. So I unplug the car first before I precondition because if I leave the car plugged in and it's drawing power from the house, then I'm going to get charged for that. Now I charge at night on Octopus Go, so it's five pence for me where I live. Um, and I think it is for everyone on Octopus Go, but it's the day rate that changes. My point is that it actually works out a little bit cheaper if you think about whether or not you've charged on a eco tariff overnight um, and whether or not you need to extend your range or simply warm the car up just to make it more comfortable. So that's what I've done. I have preconditioned for a little while and uh, we are ready to go. So the first tip that I've got is um, if you use Google, um, you will probably already know this but um, if you look up things in Google Maps on your phone and it's the same account that you're using in the car those will be there in your history so I have uh, searched at home for all of the locations I want to go to today so that they're already in the list so yeah if you have a look at this you'll see what I mean this is the screen here so if I to go to the Google Maps page obviously go to your apps here and then you hit Google Maps and uh, on here you can see hopefully that's focused okay that um, I've got this list of locations that I was looking up yesterday and these are the places I need to go so the first one I'm going to is Coffee Doctor here in Lansing which is a 24 minute drive so it's showing that that will uh, use um, the amount of battery that's going to use will get me there with 76 percent and uh, we have started off with uh, 89 percent there on the battery so we'll see what it's like when we get down to um to the location and whether or not that's accurate um so yeah let's remember 76 percent and uh yeah we're all good to go Okay, so I've made it down to the first stop. Uh, it is at a company called Coffee Doctor. They specialize in uh, maintenance and repairs of coffee equipment like espresso machines and things like that. So I had to pick up, uh, it's actually, if you're interested in coffee, it's something called a Limazocca Linear Mini. And uh, yeah, you can see how that fits in the boot back here. It's a small single group espresso machine for making great coffee. Um, they aren't cheap though, they're nearly 4,000 pounds, but um, it's something that we use as part of our business. But uh, what I wanted to show is have a look at the space back there. I've got a load of coffee to deliver. Um, I had this espresso machine to pick up. And then I also, on my way back, 
while doing this, I have to drop off uh, a Denon receiver uh, from my, my home cinema system that has got uh, a fault in one of the amps that's causing problems. So I need to drop that off. And uh, yeah, this is the nice thing about the Polestar. You fold those seats down and there is so much space back there, something that I find really good. And the boot opening is easy to get things in and out of. It's not the sort of small, small opening that you get in saloon cars. And that was one of the key things that I wanted when I, when I decided to get this car. I got uh, a bit sick of driving the BMW 330e with the small boot. It was just, it was fine. Like you could get stuff in there. There was plenty of space, but this is the thing. You see this in reviews where literage is mentioned a lot and the volume of, of the space. And that's all very well, but the boot opening is a significant factor because you, you can have all the space you, you like in, in the back of the car, but if you can't get the the boxes or the items in easily without hurting your back or or trying to sort of you know get it through this gap it's not that useful um so yeah we uh, arrived here with 77 percent battery and that just shows how good this google map system actually is at predicting the battery range now i've mentioned this in other videos the range display that you get on the driver's display behind the steering wheel just ignore that basically that is um that does not take into account your your consumption or or is compensated for temperature or the route that you're going to use it is just a very fixed system that um gives you a rough estimate of of what you might get but it is not dynamic, it's not changeable, it doesn't adapt with the car. That's something I'd like to see Polestar improve on. But the display on Google Maps, that is very good. It usually is slightly pessimistic. I've yet to arrive anywhere and have worse consumption. Now, this is something, if you're considering a Tesla, Check out some of the other videos because you'll see that um, some of the Tesla drivers in winter actually um, will put their route in and I've seen some of them arrive with worse consumption, a lower battery percentage than the display will calculate. So that's quite interesting. My experience so far has been on the Polestar is that it's always been pessimistic and I've always arrived with slightly more um, than the, the map has given me. So yeah, rely on the Google Maps for your percentage if you're doing a longer drive and don't use the range on the driver's display um, because that is nearly always um, a lot more, more mileage than you're actually going to get, especially at colder temperatures in winter. So consumption is showing, you can see on the display here, 41.4 um, in the trip manual and 19.2 miles. So uh, yeah, that's fairly poor. Um, that is not if highly efficient and you're not gonna get a lot of range out of a car driving like that. But um, let's see what happens as we go through each leg. Um, so we drove 19.2 miles on the first one according to the trip computer. And now we're going to uh, go to the next location. So yeah, have a look at this. So having a look here at Google Maps display, I need to now go to uh, Volvo in Worthing, which is just 4.8 miles from here. I need to pick up my car seats. I left my children's car seats at Volvo in the loan car, and uh, I need to head down there to collect those. So yeah, it's gonna be a 13 minute drive, 4.8 miles, 74%. So when we get there, we'll have a look again at whether or not the percentage is correct and uh, carry on from there. Okay, so we've arrived at Worthing Volvo now, and uh, yeah, 74% on the battery. So you can see what I mean. It uh, really is quite accurate, the range estimates with uh, Google Maps. And uh, we are now down at 40.6 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So it's improved a little bit. The first stretch I drove was quite fast, to be honest. It was on dual carriageway, 70 mile an hour, most of it to get down to the first stop. And uh, then the second section of it was much slower, kind of city driving, and uh, trying to be more gentle with the accelerator. Um, something that I was thinking about actually when I left earlier, if you're thinking about driving as efficiently as you possibly can, when you charge up to 90% on the Polestar, and you can see here on the display, you can see the charge section is grayed out. So that means if you are going to be braking or slowing down, you're not going to get any regen benefit. So you're not going to get the car putting any energy back into the battery. And uh, this makes for a very uh, inefficient style of driving. So if you, again, if you need to charge the 90 or 100% for range, that's a different story. 
But if you are doing a fairly short journey and you charge to 90% with cold temperature, that puts the battery into a state where it isn't able to properly regen. And uh, as you can see there, I left with 90% and it wasn't able to regen at all. Sometimes you get a, a bit of the regen area grayed out, but in that case, it was nothing. So for about the first few miles, and I'd say 5% of battery, until the battery warmed up and the percentage went down, I wasn't really getting any benefit from the regenerative side of, of driving an electric car. And all of the braking has to be done with the brakes that's inefficient because when you brake with traditional brakes you generate heat and you just dissipate that energy through a means that can't be recaptured in any way now obviously the motors don't capture all of the energy but putting some of it back into the battery is very useful so if you're doing shorter trips especially in winter and you don't need to go a long way it's better to probably charge to a lower percentage uh it's good for the battery health as well but um mainly so that you can actually regen earlier on and you don't have as much of a penalty as you would at a high percentage. So yeah, I'm just gonna pick up these uh, car seats and then head off to the next stop. Okay, so I've got the car seats and are ready to go now to the next location. Something I did wanna mention is the 4G has been working absolutely fine since I think it was about Monday last week. Um, so yeah, I had, um, you, you might have seen my video about the frustrations with the 4G and the Wi-Fi. I still find those things kind of annoying because the Wi-Fi doesn't work. But um, basically I left my car seats here at Volvo by accident when they gave me a loan car about 10 days ago. I brought the car down here on the advice of Polestar for them to have a look at this uh, Wi-Fi and 4G issue and they reset some software um, did a few bits and uh, for them it was working fine now I, I left I drove away and for the next two days the 4G worked kind of on and off uh, more off than on I'd say and the Wi-Fi no it doesn't work at all I've tried tethering to two different phones uh, my home Wi-Fi network I've tried uh, various configurations all kinds of different things just to be absolutely sure it still doesn't work um, but the 4G has come back and that's been um, that's been stable for about seven days so I'm really hoping that stays that way so um, yeah we're going to head off now now, and the next place I want to stop is, so let's have a look at the map. So the next place I am going to is, uh, let's get rid of that and go to the list. So I've added this in actually earlier. This location here is next to um, an electric blue charger, which is, uh, oh, so this is, uh, yeah, if anyone wants to know, this is your notifications for messages that come through onto your phone, which can be quite cool. So you can then swipe down from the top and apparently I have an order arriving from More for Doors tomorrow, which is some door handles, uh, yeah, exciting stuff. And uh, so anyway, um, we're going to an electric blue charger. This is one of the lamppost chargers I wanna try out and see if I can actually get it to work, which will be, be a first uh, on a lamppost charging system. So yeah, it's saying 29 minutes and 64% on arrival, which is 10% of battery usage to go 15 miles. And uh, yeah, let's see what uh, happens. We're at uh, 190 miles showing on there and 74% battery level with uh, 40.6 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So I'm driving over to uh, this electric blue charging point in Brighton from Worthing. And uh, I've uh, done a couple of videos of charging in Brighton um, that you might have seen. If you haven't, then uh, you can look back at the, uh, those potholes. So you probably heard the distortion on the, the microphone there a little bit. It's the potholes. And um, this car is particularly firm, I'd say. Um, not in a bad way, like it's really nice. It handles very well, but um, you do find yourself trying to avoid those potholes. And I, I can guess it's probably even worse in the performance pack. Um, so yeah, apologies for a little bit of distortion and noise. That's any time I hit like a pothole or any rough surface in the road it gets quite noisy um, but yeah so electric blue is uh, a, an electric charging company that uh, has this network of lamppost chargers across brighton and uh yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about, about the changes that have happened. Brighton is a, a local city to me, so I spend quite a lot of time there. And um, we have uh, seen basically the Chargemaster um, Polar and 
I don't know if it's, no, it's not Charge Master. Charge Your Car, I think it was. Uh, installations removed, which were in the public car parks and replaced with um, these electric blue chargers. Now, uh, the previous ones that were there in the the paid parking, if you had a Polar membership or a BP Pulse it is now, it was free to use those chargers. And so that was great. You could, uh, you'd obviously have to pay for parking, but you got free charging included. But now not only do you have to pay for parking, you also have to pay 26 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity and uh yeah i think it's 26 or 27 pence which is expensive um if you're charging at home um on a, an eco tariff it's like about five um but even if you're not on an eco tariff it's probably going to be around 15 or something like that so the to me i don't know why you would use those charges if you're paying you know i don't know one to two pounds per hour of parking why would you also pay um such high prices for for power i i don't know so that system is disappointing um but they do have these lamppost chargers um that are really cool so if you're a resident in brighton and you don't have somewhere to charge and don't have a driveway then uh, you can use the network of lamppost based chargers now most of these are quite slow they're not seven kilowatts sadly they're three um they're the 3.6 or, or something like that um, charging charging option so they are pretty slow but if you have a residence permit then you're you're the only one that can use those charges they're not open to the public but some of them are available to people who are paying to park on the street and again they're quite pricey so 26 pence per kilowatt hour is isn't cheap but uh, I suppose they would argue that it's the cost of maintaining and installing the equipment um, which yep to be fair that's true the cost of buying in the electricity and also the cost of running the business and making some profit so yeah I guess that's where they come up with those numbers um, it's barely any cheaper though than using a rapid charger so for example if you if you get a BP pulse membership you could actually find yourself charging at a 50 kilowatt charger for less than it would cost to charge at those locations so yeah it's something to, to consider but it's great that the system exists for people who live in Brighton and who do want to use these chargers so I'm heading over to one that is open to the public um, and you can pay to park there and I'm going to give it a try and see if I can uh, get a successful charge now my previous attempts to charge on this network have been unsuccessful um, there are some locations that have free parking and Brighton with these charging units but I the two that I've tried they just didn't work and I've tried them more than once maybe this maybe the problem is fixed now but uh, I've got an RFID card and we'll see what it's like when I get there and if I can get a charge on one of these lamppost systems so yeah my plan was to uh, use this lamppost charger but I have had no luck using these charging systems uh, so I drove past the charger found it and it was iced occupied by internal combustion engine cars and uh, I don't know if that's just because someone's parked there or not but yeah I'm gonna walk up there and let's check it out have a look at it and see what the situation is and uh, why it was occupied I do want to say though that I arrived with 65%, which is exactly what Google Maps predicted. Actually, it was probably 66, but I had to drive around a few laps to find somewhere to park. It is never easy to park in Brighton, and with a lockdown, hardly anyone's driving to work, so uh, there's even less car parking available. But 65%, which is almost exactly what it said, and uh, yeah, 38.3 now, so. Um, that has improved, and that is, is always been my experience with the Polestar so far, is that you you get quite poor efficiency and range from your first uh, few miles, or it depends how, you know, it's not, it's not a fixed number, but it, the more you use the car during the course of a day, generally I find the better it gets to a point where it starts to average out. But yeah, 38.3 kilowatt hours per 100 miles now. Okay, so this is the uh, parking space that I wanted to use, and uh, you can see this is the electric charger. Um, yeah, kind of cool units. Um, they're nice and new, and they're really small and compact, um, which I think is really nice. But um, unfortunately, I couldn't use it because the space is occupied by a couple of cars. And uh, what's really interesting is that this is not a marked space for electric cars only. There's no markings on the ground, and um, obviously that means it's open for anyone to park here. But to me, this seems really strange. Like, what would be the point in installing this kind of network around Brighton when you don't actually uh, restrict it to electric cars only? It's just a complete waste of money. But um, I did manage to find a different spot while I was walking up here that is marked for EVs only so in that case that one was free but but the problem is that one's for residents only so I couldn't use that because I don't have a residence permit but um 
my point here is that you know electric blue and uh, in practice it's not really electric blues problem I think it's more to do with the council um, and I've seen this mentioned online is that they're not properly marking out these spaces for electric cars only so there is no way for people to know whether or not they're going to be able to park there because someone could with a residence permit theoretically park their petrol or diesel car here for weeks and not have to move it so it, it could be that this installation is not going to be available for anyone to use for weeks months years perhaps even because yeah someone might just leave their car there so it's a real shame that uh, that the council haven't done more to make electric car charging easier for people to to do okay so i've dropped off my den and receiver at seven oaks sound and vision down in brighton and uh, hopefully that doesn't take too long to repair but uh, yeah now it's off to the next stop which is uh, a business called brood in brighton and uh, I am going to go and drop off some coffee there. So uh, one of the interesting things that I think is quite nice is when you uh, use Google Maps to select um, something on the list, you can, uh, so I'm gonna type in um, brood, have a look at this. So the nice thing is it's telling me that it's closed, which is, uh, which is really useful to know. So again, having something like Google Maps available to you does help you with, um, with things like that, knowing where you're going and uh, you know closures, that kind of thing. It automatically will show that up on the screen. So yeah, it says 12 minutes, 63% we're gonna arrive with. So that, by the time you arrive. yeah, there we go. So you can get a voice warning saying it might close by the time we arrive. Do we wanna still go? Yes, let's continue. You are on the fastest route despite some traffic. You should reach your destination by 1619. Okay, so that's cool. That's good to know. So that's, uh, yeah, one of the benefits of uh, Google Maps is um, is having that information right there built into the display for you. And uh, yeah, another thing I wanted to mention, driving through the city in an electric car is actually really quite satisfying feeling, um, knowing that you uh, don't emit any particulate matter into the air. Now, this is something that I think a lot of people forget about, and, and me too, in fact. The last video, someone left a comment mentioning that the benefits are not just about carbon emissions and uh, the long-term avoidance of using fossil fuels but also about air quality in cities now if you think about it um, you know there are a lot of tricks and things that that happen on modern cars diesel cars for example like add blue uh, particulate filters things like that but um, there are still cars still emit particulates and uh, cause a lot of lung damage um, to people by having these kinds of uh, pollutants in the air. Now, if you're driving in a city and you're driving in an EV, you're not emitting anything. So uh, yeah, it is a fantastic uh, feeling, kind of a smug feeling, I guess, driving around in a city knowing that you're not uh, actually emitting anything into the atmosphere for people to be breathing in. So yeah, 12 minute drive, 63% will arrive with, and uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay, so time for the final leg of this drive. And uh, yeah, I deliver that coffee. And uh, in exchange for the delivery of the coffee, I'll put a bit more light on here. Uh, I have received some really nice craft beers. This one from uh, Big Hug Brewing. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try that later maybe. And then another one, another juicy pail. So yeah, uh, always nice to get, uh, get craft beer in exchange for delivering the coffee which is nice. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at the map. Okay, so let's open Google Maps and I'm gonna select home. 25 minutes, 15 miles, and it's estimating that we'll get there with 53%. And we're currently on 62% now, so that's 9% uh, for 15 miles of traveling. Battery level's at 62% there. And our average so far is 39.4. So yeah, let's head off home and see what uh, the total average is once we get there.
that was a really nice afternoon driving around in the Polestar, back home now. And uh, yeah, another thing that's great in the city in this car is the um, the air filter system is great. Like you, you don't smell any of the diesel fumes, nothing from any of the trucks or vans in the city, which is really nice, making it a really comfortable car to drive around in. And uh, yeah, so the consumption, we got back with 39.5 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And uh, if you assume a usable battery of say 72.5 um, kilowatt hours, then that works out to a range of about 183, 184 miles if you went from 100% down to zero. Um, which is not realistic in the real world, but it just gives you a rough idea of what that drive was like. I did a lot of start-stop as well, and, and each time, I think in the middle of one of the places I stopped in Brighton, I actually, I was out the car probably for 45 minutes, so it cooled down, so it had to, to reheat again. Um, and as I mentioned, the regen is not going to do anything for you um, when you start off and I had no regen available for the first little while of driving so that again reduces the efficiency but that's what it would be like if you charge to 100% so yeah just a real world example of uh, a multi-stop trip during the day covering uh, yeah 57 miles in total. So uh, yeah, I hope this video has been useful and uh, you've seen some interesting stuff driving around in uh, Sussex and also what it's like using the Polestar uh, 2 as a car to drive around and a few tips and little bits of information here and there. So if you haven't uh, subscribed already, please do. Uh, it would be really great, much appreciated. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Thank you.